six months of collecting down to a few minutes of unboxing. Next up, two most expensive books, thousands of dollars a piece. Got some boxes here that contain some great horror books. Now we have uh, some original art, a small one and a big one. They're going to blow your mind. Got plenty of space up on my wall for more artwork. Speaking of trying to have more things on your wall, this is a great solution. These are Saracels. Got dozens of them. Here you go. On the left-hand side, we have many bronze and silver covers that have been put into Saracels. You may be able to see Silver Surfer up in the middle. You've got Batman going to Wonder Girl. And up top is Spider-Man, who is slinging his webs all across London. You may be able to make Big Ben out there in the background. Now let's go to Hot Stuff. What a great Infinity cover that is. Then we have Donald Duck, who has his three sons, Huey, Dewey, and Louie, propelling him. Now we have Archie doing what Archie does best, hanging out with Betty and Veronica. There he is with a guitar behind him, ready to strum. Now we have Airbrush Covers by Schomburg, Wonder 15, Exciting 62, and Thrilling 69 on the bottom. Let's go from there to these Golden Age superheroes, The Flash, Cap, and Bucky. And up top, we have a character that some of y'all might know, but more obscure, it is the Black Hood from MLJ Magazine. Super popular in the 40s, not as well known today. Sci-fi, these are Planet Comics covers, and we've got some horror as well. I'll highlight one. It is my favorite horror cover. It is Chamber of Chills 19. Now let's go to this original three comics. These are all gifts for friends. We've got great comics. It has the suits of playing cards, Naomi One, and a sort of cover recreation. Marvel Presents Fantastic Four with Doctor Doom on the cover. Here are the mid-level books. I have a couple that are horror themed. One is Mystery Adventures number 15, which is a hoot. We'll talk more about that later. Manhunt number one, Exciting Comic 66, and a slew of great Matt Baker books. Matt Baker, by the way, is the best romance cover artist that there is. So let's go from uh, Matt Baker to the biggest books we have that are done by my boy Alex Schomburg. And these books in low to mid grade are the hundreds of dollars. But if you go in these nosebleed grades, they get really rare and they get expensive. Got an 8.5 and a 9.0. Here we have our original art. Let's take a look at the small one. It's some great uh, ink work done, lots of detail of the specter. And at the bottom, you can see all these tortured souls. It's really cool. Now for the big boy. For Fun Comics number 54, and this is quote unquote a recreation cover, although it's got a lot of original touches to it. Doesn't look too much like the original. Tons of Easter eggs if you're a Golden Age fan. Let's start with the cheapest first. I got this for $24.99 on St. John Green's eBay site. The bidding starts at $24.99 and I landed about half the books you saw for that low bid. They look great and there are actually two parts to them. So the main image is one sheet and then below that is another sheet that has coloring to it and put together it's quite dynamic. So I love getting these great deals there from St. John Green. Now, as you go to more classic covers, the bidding can go up a lot higher than that. And here we have, of course, Chamber of Chills 19. Tons of Golden Age collectors love this book. And the bidding went up pretty high. I got this for around $100. i have seen some classic covers go up to three or $400 on that site. And by the way, I'll put his link uh, in the description box below. Let's move on to some comic books. We'll go into horror. This one now is one of my favorite books. It's Mystery Adventures number 15. And I had never heard of this book before a couple of years ago. Then I saw a 5.0 go for over $2,000 on Heritage. And I looked at it, I thought, this is an incredible cover. Then I saw this one a few months later and it sold for, I think it was in the mid 300s that I bought it for. Absolutely wonderful. There's this girl in red dress in the background and she's saying, Bill, Bill, where's my bill? Then you have this crazy dude in a cape who's got the skull face and he's like, here's your bill. And he is using Bill's head as a bowling ball. Obviously the head has turned into um, a skull, but he's a pretty darn good bowler. Turns out to be a strike. I love the goofiness. This book used to be like super cheap 10 years ago. 
but I think it's finally caught on about how cool it is. Unfortunately, I don't think that there's any way to save Bill, but you can save this channel by giving it a like. Let me move to another great cover. I would also say this is horror themed. You have this executioner guy up there on a rooftop, got his ax, super menacing, is also like super buff too. You got the hero way back there in the background. And then you had the lady in the red dress in the foreground and she's holding on to dear life onto this gargoyle. Also note the absence of shoes here. So we have a few bare feet. So she's got a bare foot here and then he's got some two gigantic feet in the background. Don't know if I like feet or not, but I do think it looks pretty cool on this cover. This book is dated October of 1947. I bought it for just over $900. It has sold as high as $2,000 at Heritage for a 5.0, so I think it got a pretty good deal. But I'm guessing that the fair market value is probably closer to what I paid for it. <laughs> now let me make this super awkward transition from horror to romance. <laughs> so this is Going Steady. It's a unbelievably cool cover by Matt Baker, the king of romance covers in the 50s. I love this one. Now, this is a tier under like Cinderella Love number 25, and you can get it for just a fraction of the price. So as opposed to being over $10,000, this book was actually under $1,000. It's about a 4.5. I think it's great. Now look at it. I could not be happier uh, with this book. I mean, the lighting up top, the people in the background, the way he draws women. I mean, he, there's nobody better than Matt Baker at that. Let's go from Baker to Schomburg. I'm putting this up for comparison, but this is um, other good girl art. This is Exciting Comics number 66. Um, really beautiful. And this particular book is tough to get a good presented copy because these white pages are unforgiving. This book looks like a 6 or 6.5 from the front, but on oops, on the back, there is um, a lot of staining here that brings down the grade. But for me, this book is all about the cover, and I got it for mid-300s. Great price on this book. I'll take a Schomburg airbrush cover that looks nice for under $100 a point every day. So that book was in the 300s. This book cost just under 3000 Now, a couple reasons for this. Startling Comics is the hottest series of these airbrush covers, and this is one of the best known. But it's this grade. It's an 8.5. I thought it would actually go for 3500 or 4000 Ended up getting it for just over 2500 Looks great in hand. The best known book in the series, of course, is Startling 49. That book in 8.5 will cost you 20000 25000 So this is merely a fraction of that. Um, but I love to have it. And this is the highest copy of Startling 53 that I have. So let's move on to the most expensive book I have. All right, here's the next book. This is Startling Comics number 47 at a 9.0. So throughout my talking about this unboxing, I've been speaking about these great deals I've been getting. This book was not a great deal. I've gone after this book in high grade, a 9.0 or higher, three or four times in the last seven years and never able to score it. So I said, you know what? I'm going to go super aggressive. Now, my thought is that this book in fair market value is probably $4,000 to $4,500. I had to climb up that ladder and go to $5,000 to finally score a copy. So uh, probably not the best move from a financial position, but I'm patient. I waited seven years. Just couldn't get it. So I thought, hey, I'm going to go for it. I'm going to make a high bid. And I finally got it. It's beautiful, a 9.0. And there's only a handful of examples that grade higher. So getting this book in any grade, not tough. Getting this book at a 9.0 or higher, really challenging to get. Without further ado, let's go to that big piece of art. Now hold on for just a second. Because this thing is huge. I'm probably going to get a hernia from lifting this thing up. It's more fun 54 recreation cover. All right, absolutely huge. A couple things I want to point out before I actually show you a picture of it. <laughs> but you can see it's got like pages that are sort of drawn, made to look like pages on the side. It also has these like staples that are built into it. So even though it's art, he made it look like an actual comic book. 
and there's spine roll too, which is hilarious. And as I move my fingers over this area, it's actually indented. So the amount of time that the Dan Macara, the artist, spent on this piece is unbelievable. It really is more like a piece of art than just a cover recreation. It says it's more fun comics number 54, but as you can see, there is not much relationship to this piece to the original. Now, of course, they both feature the Spectre, but that's about as similar as it is. More Fun 54, of course, features the famous Bernard Bailey cover where Spectre is like 100 feet tall. He's got airplanes in his hands. He's got people below him and all this fire is chaos and it's beautiful. One of my favorite books of all time. This one is an Easter egg party for Golden Age collectors. There are so many different themes that are going on there. So you might notice that it's got a date stamp on it, which we Golden Age collectors usually love. It's also got a signature on there. It says Lyrone, which is a direct takeoff of Larson, which many of you all know is, is one of the pedigrees that CGC recognizes. And let's talk about the image a little bit. Looking through the old Spectre covers, the cover it most looks like is More Fun Comics number 63, where you see Spectre coming out of this smokestack, as opposed to the Makira version, where the Spectre is coming out of a cigarette. I love that touch. Also, you note those lasers coming out of the Spectre's eyes. I think that's a takeoff of an early Flash Comics Golden Age book. There are a couple details where I just couldn't find what the inspiration was, but maybe you can tell me. They've got the dude whose head is now just a brain, and you had that lady shrieking off to the side. It looks a lot like Wolverton art, but I couldn't find any sort of direct comparison of a cover. If you have an idea where Makara might have gotten those ideas from, please let us know. I am getting tired just by holding up this thing. By the way, if you like More Fun 54 as part of my top 25 comics, check that video out. If you love this video, if you love the channel, please consider subscribing.